very good day to you and welcome to the Revival Train. Today it's very windy, it's very blustery, the cattle are making a lot of noise, but I just feel in my spirit that the Holy Ghost is with us today. I really mean that with all my heart. I want to speak to you today from my heart. Two words only. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave them to me early this morning. Do good. In an evil world where everybody is out for himself, the Lord says, do good. In a world where everybody is so selfish and when it comes to self-preservation, seems to be at the top of the list, the Lord says, deny yourself and do good. If we go to the Word of God in Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. That's exactly what the Lord says. He says, do good when people are doing evil against you. That's basically what the Lord is saying. I'm just finding the scripture um, on, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. What a beautiful day it is on the farm here. I trust that you also are resting and listening to the word. Verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, my dear friend, you and I, we're not from this world. No, no. We are simply passing through. We are sojourners. We are different. We are totally different. Exactly. And that's how God wants us to be. Our home is actually in heaven. It's not here on earth. So when people do evil to you, you don't do evil back to them. So what we must do is when, we, when people do evil to us, we, we don't respond in the same way. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us in the book of Matthew, he says, we must be reconciled to your brother before we offer our gift at the altar. And you'll find that in the book uh, in um, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 24. We really need to fight fire with love, not with fire. Matthew chapter 5 and verses 38 and 39. This is what the Word of God says. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek turn the other one to him also. So when he slaps you on that side, then you give him this side. And that's not easy. And that's not a joke. Because God says, He is the God of revenge. Not you, not me. A wonderful preacher by the name of F.B. Mayer, a great man of God, an Englishman, he said, show kindness to all men and trust God for the results. Isn't that wonderful? You know, you know, I've heard a guy say, I've got my rights. I want revenge. Sir, you've got no rights. <laughs> when you gave your life to Jesus, you gave all your rights away. The only rights we have is in Christ and in Him alone. He is the one who will justify everything that has ever gone wrong in the world. I remember many, many years ago in South Africa, I was speaking to a group of farmers in the Eastern Cape. It was a very turbulent time. There had been a lot of terrorism taking place in that area. And some farmers had been murdered. And we were having a farmers event in the Saturday night. And one of the farmers stood up and he said, I feel like a bit of revenge. I said to him, sir, are you prepared to take your child and put your child on the altar? Is that what you say? No, no. I said, well, you're a very selfish man. 
Revenge belongs to the Lord, not to anybody else. I can see somebody sitting there right now saying, but Angus, my husband has done me wrong. He has taken off with another woman. He's committed adultery. He's broken me. He's disgraced me and the family. I want to get revenge. I want to pay him back. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You know, one man said if uh, we all applied that principle, there'd be hardly anybody in the world that could see. And no one would have any teeth. Revenge belongs to the Lord. Do good against evil. That is how you overcome evil. You don't overcome evil by evil. Otherwise, where is it going to stop? And so he said, show kindness to all men and trust God for the results. Revenge belongs to the Lord. He will set the record straight. And that's why you and I are called. It's hard. I know it's hard. Tell me about it. We are called to pray for our enemies. We are called to pray for those who oppress us. Jesus says, what difference are you and I to the world if we pray for those who love us? When we pray for our enemies, that is the difference. There's no religion in the world, I can tell you right now, apart from Christianity, that applies this principle. Jesus Christ died for your sins and for my sins. When he hung on the cross, he said, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It's very tough to be a Christian. Make no mistake. Some people seem to think that to be a Christian is to be a sissy, to be weak. No, it's the opposite. It takes courage to turn the cheek. It really does. And you want to hit back. No, it's the time to go to prayer and pray for your enemies. Why does the Lord say that? He says, because revenge is mine. I want to tell you, there might be a lady sitting there now. Maybe an old gentleman, and you're saying, but where's the justice, Angus? Where's the justice? How can people like Adolf Hitler, Mao Zedong, get off free? It's not over yet, sir. The day of judgment is still approaching. And the Bible says every single one of us, including you, will give an account of everything that you have done in this world. That is quite sobering, isn't it? Everything. Every good thing, every bad thing. Everything. The Lord has not overlooked anything. Not at all. And unless we truly repent, and I'm going to pray for you at the end of this program today, because a lot of us need to repent. That is why you are sick in your body. That's right. Because you are angry and you are full of unforgiveness. Because people have hurt you and you are poisoning yourself. Really, you've got to overcome evil with good for your sake and for my sake. And most of all, for God's sake, because he said it. God knows what's good for us. Bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, self-righteousness. These things will poison you just like when you drink poison. I want to tell you that. Many people have wronged me as well. If I take my shirt off now and you look between my shoulder blades, you will see the scars of where I've been stabbed multiple times. Who has stabbed me? Those who I have trusted the most because they're the only ones that can get close enough to me to stab me. I can see the enemy coming from a mile away. I can see the devil coming from a mile away, but those who trust me, and I want to tell you something now, the Savior of the world understands this principle more than anyone. Why? Because out of 12 disciples, three betrayed him. That's right. Judas Iscariot sold the master for 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus knew he was going to do it, and Jesus still washed his feet. Now, if that's not overcoming evil with good, then please tell me what is. 
And what about uh, Peter? Three times he denied the master. Lord, I will never leave you. He took his sword out. Lord, I'll, I'll fight with you to the death. Three times he said, I don't even know him. The third time he was blaspheming. That, by, by the way, is an old-fashioned word for cursing and swearing. I don't peep, 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 know him. Three times. And what about Thomas? Thomas was so disheartened. Thomas was so disappointed. He said, I don't even believe that the Lord has been resurrected. He says, when I can put my finger in the holes in his hands where the nails were, when I can take my hand and put it inside, then I will believe. And of course, Jesus just stood right in front of him. He never came through the door. He said, Thomas, Thomas, put your hand in my side. Put your finger in the holes. Oh, my God, he said. He said, you say, well, Thomas, because you've seen, but blessed are those who come after me who still believe. And that's you and me, by the way, my dear friend. Revenge belongs to the Lord. We have to overcome evil with good, not evil with evil. Otherwise, where does it stop? I want to appeal to you, Christian. If you are not going to take a stick, and draw a line in the sand and say, this far devil and no further. If you are not going to do that, who is going to do it? There is no one else. We have a tremendous responsibility, you and I, to keep the gospel pure and to apply godly principles. Revenge belongs to the Lord. And we need to remember that, you and I. We need to remember it with all our heart. Don't try and overcome evil with evil because it will rob your joy. And I want to speak particularly to people of my age group. I've met a lot of old people who have been, been let down. A partner has stolen their money. You brought him in in good faith and he's worked you right out of your own business and you are angry and you want blood. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the foot of the cross. Because if you don't, God can't help you. You know, when I was a new Christian, I'm talking, I'd been walking with the Lord maybe two years. We had a prayer day in the little Methodist church here in Great Town, which is about 15 kilometers away. And I said to my wife, Jill, I'm going to pop into town and I'm going to go and pray for an hour at lunchtime. So I got in my farm pickup. I still had my overalls on. I was still clearing bush and building dams like this one over here. And it was a windy, blustery day, just like it is at the moment. This is what a farmer puts up with every day. <laughs> and I drove into town and I parked my pickup in the main street. And I walked into the church. I was dirty, but my heart was clean. Well, I thought it was to go and pray. But you see, what had happened was the minister of that church, Errol, and I had had an altercation. What had happened was, I was so full of excitement, we were having a big youth meeting at a campsite just outside of town, and a couple of the young boys had gone over the top, one of them threw a, a rock or a ball through the, the window and broke the mirror, and the other boy, who happened to be my son, by the way, <laughs> He rolled a big tire into a plastic pipe, pipe and broke the toilet. And, and I was so excited about the converts. We had about 200 kids that had given their lives to the Lord. And I was so excited. And then Errol just took me aside. He said, but listen, Angus, just one thing. I want to give you a word of caution here. I said, what? Already the wind was going out of my sail. He says, you know, you're doing a great job, but you must teach the kids to respect the property of the owner. Hey, I was cross, eh? How much do I owe you? <laughs> Revenge. I'll pay it now. I could care less if all the pipes were broken and all the windows were broken. As long as, now he's saying, quieten down, Angus. I said, I'm not quietening down. It's all about salvation. Anyway, we had a bit of a, as you can imagine. And he was quite right, of course. As Christians, as believers, we're supposed to be responsible, especially for other people's property. So I walked into the church that day. There wasn't a soul in the church. It was midday. I walked up to the altar rail, and I was about to get on my knees. 
when I looked to the right of me and who was sitting in the front seat, right in the corner, also praying. <laughs> That's right. It was Errol. It was the minister. And you know, before I could get on my knees, the Holy Spirit said to me almost audibly, Angus, before I hear any of your prayers, go and say sorry to the minister. And I'm saying, Lord, I didn't do anything wrong. Lord, look at all the young people who have come to Christ. Look at the revival we have. And he said, say sorry. It seems to be the story of my life. <laughs> I really mean that. Oh, folks, sometimes you get tired of saying sorry. But that's what God said. So I, 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 I didn't even go down on my knees. I looked there. And you know, at that very moment, Errol got up and he started walking towards me. Then the tears started flowing. And then we hugged each other. I said, Errol, I'm sorry. And he said, and I'm sorry too, Angus. And what a beautiful prayer meeting we had together for an hour. You've got to overcome evil with good. Not evil with evil. I will never forgive him for what he did to me. I will never forget those, forgive those people for what they did to my family. I will, if you say that, God will never be able to use you. You really need to understand that. We have got to forgive one another because God said so. You know, I don't know if you remember an old movie. Look, this movie is so old. It came out in, 1900 and, in the 1960s. I remember as a young student going to Scotland to study agriculture, and this book came out, The Cross and the Switchblade. What an incredible story of David Wilkerson, the skinny preacher, who was minding his own business in the country. He was a country preacher, and he opened the newspapers to find out that these gangsters, these young kids, were on trial for murder. And he felt the oh Lord Holy Spirit say, Go! to New York, go to the slums there and go and help those kids. And he walked into that courthouse, remember? And he put up his Bible and he said, please uh, forgive them. And what happened? He hit the headlines and uh, the people at home, I think they wanted to fire him as the pastor. Anyway, all kinds of hell broke loose. But I'm always excited when those things happen because that normally means Jesus is doing something. He started preaching in the streets to these gangsters. When I say gangsters, these are children. These are young boys and girls, 15, 16, 18 years old. Drug addicts, alcoholics, and everything else. Murderers, that's right. The cross and the switchblade. A switchblade is a, is a flick knife, by the way. And these young people knew how to use it. And the one day, the skinny preacher David Wilkerson was standing on his soapbox and he was preaching to a whole crowd of young people in the street. Some of them telling him where to go, using the horrible words again, peep, peep, off, we don't need you. And he just carried on telling them about the love of Christ. And the Lord loves you and the Lord wants you to forgive so that he can forgive you. And eventually the leader, one of the main leaders, a man by the name of Nicky Cruz, and he's still alive today. I've just Googled him before this program. He's in his 80s. He's been happily married to his wife for 60 years. <clears throat> he stood at the back, and he told the preacher where to go. And the preacher got off his soapbox and started to follow him. And he started running, and he ran down the streets. And the preacher ran after him, and he went into this den. In a, in a kind of a, like an underground uh, building. And he cornered Nicky Cruz. And Nicky Cruz turned around and he took his knife out. He said, preacher, he said, if you come, come one step close, I'll cut you into a hundred pieces. And David Wilkinson said, and every piece will tell you the same thing, Nicky. <laughs> that Jesus loves you. And with that, that gangster dropped his knife and he repented and he came to Christ. He's become one of the greatest evangelists in the world, Nicky Cruz. Why? Because a preacher overcame 
evil with good. Can hear the birds singing over there. They are green with me as well. I want to say to you today, it's the only hope that South Africa has. It's the only hope that the world has. The devil wants us to hate each other. The devil is on a path and he wants us to self-destruct. You know what that means? That's right. To destruct ourselves. By how? By hatred, by unforgiveness, and by evil. Jesus said, I came that you might have life abundantly. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give them life abundantly. I want to tell you today that Jesus loves you. You know, as this wind is blowing, it's just about wanting to blow me off this damn wall. I feel the presence and the love of God. Just say sorry. You know the old tango, that dance? Many of you don't know it. Well, it takes two to tango. You can't dance the tango by yourself. I'm not talking necessarily about business. I'm not talking about sport. or the, I'm talking about home base, Dad. Mom, children, you've got to forgive each other if you are going to have a successful family. Very easy to go out there and tell other people how to live. By the way, this program is also talking to me probably more than to you. That's right. You see, you can go out there and tell everybody how to live, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, this is the ranch, the wheels are coming off. Well, I'm not going to say, sorry, I didn't do anything wrong. It's not about that. It's not about whether you did wrong or you didn't do wrong. Jesus didn't do any wrong, but he said, Father, forgive them. You and I need to do the same so that we won't be sick. Many of you that I'm talking to right now are sick in your bodies. Maybe you've got stomach ulcers. I don't know. Maybe you're suffering from cancer. Maybe you're suffering from COVID-19 and the after effects. I'm not saying in all cases, but many cases it's through unforgiveness. Now, I've told the story before, and I'll probably tell it a few more times. That same church, that little Methodist church in Great Town in the main street, I was praying for the sick on a Sunday morning. The people came up, they knelt at the altar rail for prayer. We anointed them with oil and we prayed for them one by one. We asked them, what is the problem? Now I've got back problems. Now I've got uh, migraine headaches. Now I've got problems with my shoulder. I can't have a baby. All those prayers and many more. This one dear old lady came forward, beautiful old lady, well turned out. Well groomed, she, she knelt at the altar. I walked up and I said, Madam, what can I pray for? I just saw her as a mother, as my own dear mother who's gone to be with Jesus and whom I had the privilege of leading to Jesus. What can I pray for? She said, Angus, I am suffering with migraine headaches. Now remember, I was a new Christian and I felt the Lord saying to me, she's got unforgiveness in her heart. I said to her, is there somebody in your family or some loved one that has hurt you and done you wrong in the past and you can't forgive them? She got so angry with me. <laughs> I'm not here to speak about my private life. I want God to heal me. And I said, that is your problem. There is someone. And then she just burst out in tears. And then quietly on her own, she prayed. And as she prayed, I anointed her with oil. I said, forgive him, forgive her. And she did. Anointed her with oil, prayed the prayer of faith. I saw that old lady a few weeks later. How are you feeling, auntie? Angus, I am on top of the world. I've never had one headache since that day. Now, I'm not saying that migraine headaches are caused by unforgiveness every time. I didn't say that. But I want to tell you, a lot of sickness is caused when we want to do evil for evil. And we want to hurt people because they've hurt us. Don't do that. Give it to Jesus and he will take care of the thing which is overcoming you and which you battled for 
for years and years. The devil's robbing you. He's robbing you of joy. He's robbing you of peace. As I'm talking to you now, my cameraman and my producer are hanging on to their, <laughs> their cameras for dear life. But we are determined to get this message to you. We will not falter. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Let me tell you something now. That's why you have to pray for your enemies. You don't want anybody to go to hell. You want everybody to be saved. And you also want to make peace. And that's why I'm going to pray for you. You need to make peace with that person so that you can have communion with God. Because if you don't have peace with that person, you won't have any communion with God. And the death of Christ on the cross will be a mockery. Don't do that, folks. That's one thing God will not tolerate. His son to be mocked. And he will not allow him to be crucified twice because you won't say sorry. You really need to think about what I'm telling you. It's not about you. It's about him in you. Now that love will set you free. It will give you new hope. Right? We need to really start to work on our relationships. And it is difficult. The most difficult place to be a Christian is in your own home. Maybe you've got to go to work tomorrow and you have to go and face somebody that you actually hate. I remember somebody telling me he's working for a guy. He says, this man is the devil incarnate. I had to swallow hard. I said, what? He said, he's the devil incarnate. Uh, we went into business together. We started off well together, but he has lost it. Money has taken over his life. And he's ruthless. Well, forgive him. How can I forgive him? Because you have to. That uh, challenge I'm talking about, the hardest place to be in your own house. Isn't that right? Yes. Your own children, madam. The very baby that you carried in your womb for nine months has now grown into a teenager and given you a torrid time. Have patience and mercy. Remember how you were at that time. They were battling with all kinds of challenges at school, at university, in life. And we really need to trust God to do a miracle in your life. God is looking for unconditional love. That's what he wants. Unconditional love. Where? Well, in the workplace, in the school, in the home. You see, as Christians, we preach what we call the upside-down gospel. What does that mean? Upside-down gospel. Well, everything the world tells us to do, we do the opposite. <laughs> the world tells us, take revenge. If he's killed you, then you kill one of your family, then you kill one of their family. No, no, you don't do that. We don't do that at all. That's called faction fighting. We have a lot of that in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, not so much now, but in the old days. One Zulu family living on the side of the mountain, and another Zulu family living on the other side of the mountain, not far away. And this one does something to that one, and that one does something to that one, and that one shoots that one, and that one shoots that one. Then you've got a war on your hands. Can't do that, folks. We've got to stop. We've got to fight evil with good. And then it will stop, just like that. And I'm appealing particularly to young people. Have patience and mercy with your mom and your dad. Some of them are actually suffering with pain. Some of them are sick. When they say something ugly to you, just forgive them. Don't take it into your heart. Because slowly but surely, it poisons you. The upside down gospel. You know, you know the, the, the sand people, the koi sand people, they call the boabab tree the upside down tree <laughs> because when that tree loses all its leaves in the winter okay it looks like a whole lot of roots that are sitting in the sky looks like the tree's been turned on its head the upside down tree the baobab tree one of africa's most beautiful trees i want to say to you let people say he's preaching the upside down gospel when people say you must hate he says you must love when people say, don't ever forget what he's done, you must forgive. And I tell you what, God will change your whole world. 
As I'm coming to a conclusion, I want to pray for you on this beautiful morning. I would like you to pray this prayer after me. And it's a sincere prayer. And it's a prayer that will set you free. It's a prayer that is guaranteed to give you new life. It's given me new life. Okay? People can do what they like. Why did all the martyrs, I'm talking about Polycarp. I'm talking about the martyr Stephen. I'm, why, as they, as they were being stoned to death or burnt at the stake, how could they say, Father, don't hold this sin against them today? Huh? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, don't hold this sin. Why? Because they know that the devil was misleading them. I want to see you in heaven. And I want you to see me in heaven. And the only way we're going to get there is by saying one word, sorry, I didn't mean it. I really didn't. I love you with the love of Jesus. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, today I have been shown that there is unforgiveness and evil in my heart. Evil intent. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm making a, a, a bold declaration. Say it. I forgive. Name that person. Name that company. Name that race group. Name that faction. Name that sportsman, whoever it is. I forgive them today, Lord. Take any malice, any anger, any hatred out of my heart today and fill me with the love of Jesus. Lord, I'm aware that I am a sojourner, a traveler in a foreign land. Lord, I know that I'm going home to be with you very shortly, but I cannot go home to be with you carrying all this baggage. I lay it down at the foot of the cross. I walk away from it and I don't speak about it again. In Jesus' name, amen. I just know that there are people getting healed as they pray that prayer. I know that. There are people that are getting healed. You are getting set free from sickness, from anger, from hatred, memory loss. That's right. I know it in Jesus' name. Don't go there again. Leave it and Jesus will take care of it. Until next week on the revival train, the train that's going to heaven and it's taking holy people, righteous people on it. Have a wonderful day. God bless you and goodbye.